Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 2nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's try today to have a couple stories that are not related to the coronavirus. And the first thing we have is a good old quackbot, uh, mal spam that uh, Brad analyzed. Now, this is typically sent from infected Windows hosts. So one of the things that malware, of course, does if it infects a host is to use uh, these hosts to send spam itself. So Pratt goes, as usual, in quite a bit of detail as he walks through the different aspects of this infection. This particular mail spam is sending fake Vodafone emails and also some of these DHL shipping notifications. So he's explaining how to analyze this using Wireshark, extracting the email messages and figuring out what additional payloads are being downloaded. And Tom is telling you, well, how to enable submitting the shield logs from Teapot. Teapot is a honeypot that incorporates a number of different sort of pieces of honeypot software and a pretty neat elastic stack to analyze it all. So a little bit uh, more heavyweight there, but uh, pretty neat and really not that difficult to enable submitting the shield logs using uh, this honeypot just by enabling it in Kauri, which is of course one of the components that Teapot uses, just like our own honeypot, to emulate SSH and Telnet. And talking about SSH, since SSH is so often scanned, one of the tricks, of course, that uh, many users are using is to run the SSH server on some random high port. This may cause some issues with the latest update of macOS 10.15.4, according to a blog post published by Tyler Hall. Now, I wasn't able to reproduce the exact behavior that he described, but there are a couple other similar posts, so hope it wasn't just a bad April Fool's joke. What he observed was that if SSH is listening on a port that's greater than 8192, and if you are connecting to the SSH server using the host name, not the IP address, the connection will fail. Now, the workaround is to add an entry to your .sh slash config file. In that case, you can just use the host name that you define in this config file and everything appears to work fine according uh, to Tyler. Again, I've seen a couple posts that uh, reproduce this issue. I wasn't able to. So uh, if you ran into this problem, if you see a difference uh, that makes it work, doesn't make it work, uh, let me know. And Cloudflare for quite a while now is offering its 1.1.1.1 or Quad 1 DNS service. And so far, the real point of using that service was maybe added privacy, maybe added speed and performance, but it hasn't really done any filtering like other services, like for example, Quad 9 or open DNS. Well, uh, Cloudflare now starts to offer a special service They call it 1.1.1.1 for families. And using that service, you will be able to either filter malware if you're using the DNS server 1.1.1.2 or to filter malware as well as adult content. And that would be 1.1.1.3 as your DNS server. Of course, this is sort of a one size fits all. You trust that whatever filtering Cloudflare does is appropriate and describes these categories well. Uh, nice little added security problem, in particular the malware uh, service. OpenDNS, of course, has always offered uh, similar services with more fine grained controls. I would probably still sort of tend to go the OpenDNS route unless you like the added sort of privacy promise that Cloudflare offers. And Cloudflare actually also just passed an external audit of its uh, privacy procedures. So there is now a little bit verification that their privacy promise is actually true. 
And then we got uh, one more Zoom story, and this time it's about Zoom leaking Windows credentials. The way the attack works is by injecting a UNC link into a Zoom conversation. This could happen, for example, via the group chat window. UNC links are the links that start with uh, two backslashes that, of course, then trigger an SMB connection to an external system. This has been an ongoing going issue in various software that does sort of blindly follow links without sort of limiting the protocols being used. And you should already have a block in place to not allow external SMB connections, which would be necessary to trigger this behavior. So what you would be leaking here is possibly the NTLM password hash. Of course, these password hashes could then be brute forced offline. In addition to blocking this on your firewall in Windows, you can also restrict outgoing NTLM traffic to remote servers. That will be another option how you can prevent this problem from being exploited. Probably a good idea because it keeps coming up in different software. Zoom has not fixed this yet. Uh, not sure when they're planning on releasing an update. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.